Are your parents alive? Yeah. How old are your parents, if you don't mind? 70. Okay. And th- where do they live? In different parts of Washington State. Okay. Do you see them? Yeah. Pretty often? Once to three times a year. Okay. So let's say they live to be 78, which is the, I hope they don't, but let's say that they, they live to the average age. So you see them one, you said once to three times? Yeah. Okay. No, you don't. It means you're going to see them 16. If you see them twice a year, you're going to see them 16 more times. When you look at it that way, you're like, what? You don't have eight years with them. You have 16 times with them. And that's the shift in my life. And that's the way I look at things. That's a fundamental shift in the way that I looked at situations six months ago. And it's created urgency. It's created... um, a need to just like not put stuff off and to recognize like what's on your list of things that you want to do. So how is turning 50 affecting the way that you think? I'm super curious. It's just realizing that like it went so fast and realizing that there's so much that I want to do and being aware that your 70s are, are a different decade than your 40s and 50s. Then you have 20 years left. And when you re- put it in perspective of how many weekends there are, you know, it's only 52 weekends. And you start to look at it like that. You're like, I'm going to be 80 in 30 years. It's scary. You know, I got kids. It's scary because there's a lot I want to do. I feel like I haven't done anything compared to what I, what I want to do and the opportunities. So, you know, it just, how do you manage your time? I never thought like that. I thought I'm going to live forever. And, um, you know, I'm bulletproof and all that stuff. And I'm not. And when you turn 50, shit happens. Friends get sick, you know, you know, take advantage of the opportunity that you have at this age and the people that you know to create amazing, to build your life resume. It's what I talk about all the time. You know, it's like you have the work resume. So what? That means nothing if you're not building up your life resume. There's only two kinds of moments, man. Like the moments that happen, 9-11, you know exactly where you never forget that, but you didn't control that. Just happened. There are moments like that where you have no control over that you just remember because they're so vivid. And then you have the moments that you have control over, that you, you know, that you circle, that you create, that you put in a position to happen. And that's, you know, kind of how you build this life resume. And that's what I would tell, that's what I hope my kids do. You know, I hope they have a life filled with memories. I lived on a monastery with uh, eight monks four of which have been there for 50 years and 50 years. And um, I went there for 15 days. I think, you know, the obvious takeaways were just the simplicity of how the, how, how the monks live uh, is something I think everyone can benefit from. I realized immediately, you know already what you're gonna miss. You're gonna miss your family and your kids and your friends and some of the comforts. You know, I, I didn't wanna give away some of the comforts that I had. But you also realize that how much, at least I did, in my daily life, how much time I spend and worry I spend on things that are irrelevant. And when I released, when I released that, I got so insanely creative and had so much energy. Because like thoughts, worry, all that, it's exhausting. Well, I think like everybody, I feel overwhelmed a lot still even though I'm older now and I've had some success and failure, but I still have a lot of arrows that come at me uh, all the time. Requests for my time, challenges at work, challenges raising kids, being in a marriage, you know, is not easy. I mean, we have a great marriage, but it's not easy work. Um, And it's overwhelming. So for me, I think part of it is always having something big on my calendar that I can look forward to. Uh, every mo- every other month, um, I try to put something on my calendar for a weekend that I can really look forward to. So it helps me get through the tough times. And I like to have one, at least one really big challenge a year that kind of centers me and, and keeps me honest, keeps me honest. And it, that's really helpful for me. And then the other thing that I do that really helps is I, I have a journal and I just take everything that's on my head and I keep it in a master journal. Doesn't mean I'm gonna get to it, doesn't mean it goes away, but it gets out of my head and it goes somewhere else to free up space in my head. And then I'll just work it off or I'll prioritize it from the master list. But just the act of taking all the stuff that's in your head 
putting it on paper in one place where it lives is like really freeing and energizing. How do you teach somebody to look for those opportunities, to create those opportunities? Because everyone's going to hear the no, but 99.99999% of people just accept it. It's always having the end of the movie in my head and then filling in the script. So I knew I was going to leave there with a sale. I just had to write the script and the script might change. There might be, you know, call an audible and you might have to rewrite the script. But the end of the script was always the same. I'm going to run a hundred miles. Okay. Well, how are you going to do that, Jesse? You know, like you've never, you're not like a crazy endurance runner. Well then let's think backwards of how, you know, but it starts with the end scene in the movie, even the exit, you know, like, okay, we're going to build this to sell. I don't know who I'm going to sell it to. But that's sort of been always kind of the mentality. And I think the second point to that is once you get over the fear of being embarrassed, you know, no, no one likes to be embarrassed. But once you get over being scared of being embarrassed, it's super liberating. And it allows you to go into lanes that you, otherwise you wouldn't go into. And everybody's wired differently. You know, everybody's wired completely different. It's hard to rewire someone to take, to, to be, you know, comfortable with taking risks, comfortable with being embarrassed. And I think it comes from having a lot of egg on your face and learning along the way. I've always been like, let me get my foot in the door and I will figure it out. I will hire people that can help me figure it out. I can go to experts to help me, but they usually won't help me get in the door. So let me take the first step. And then once you have momentum, you can ride the momentum. So that's always been my MO, you know, it's always been um, in everything. You mentioned living with the seal, you know, when Goggins came, all that stuff. It's just been like welcoming the unknown and being open to whatever comes of it and learning from it. Well, networking has been a big part of my life forever. When I was 24 years old, I wrote 10 letters a day, thank you notes to anyone that came into my life that impacted me. And it could be, even if I didn't know you, but I saw your show and I was like, you know what, Tom, you've had some amazing guests I've really benefited from. I would just write you a handwritten note because one, the handwritten note shows intent. You have to buy the envelope, buy the stationery, write the letter, lick the envelope, get the stamp, put it in the mail. That's a lot different than hitting send. It's also memorable. How many handwritten letters have you gotten this year? So I, I literally wrote 3,000 letters in one year. And it could be to a doorman, a cab driver, it could be anyone. I would just get their car and I would thank them. That was my form of networking. The, even to this day, I have a hot 50 list that I, of 50 people that can help me, that I want to stay in touch with, um, that I make sure every quarter or so, I send them a note and I, they always comment on it. You know, like, thank you so much. And it's, and it's authentic. It's not, I'm not just writing it to write it. I mean, they have to really have had an impact on me and, I, and it's a meaningful note. It makes me feel great and it makes the recipient feel attached to me in a different way. You know, at an early age, I understood the importance of that. The people that you meet in your 20s rise up in their 30s and are in great positions of power in their 40s. You don't know when you're 20, in your 20s who's going who's gonna to make it and who's not. So, you know, you treat everybody properly and respectfully and you stay in touch. And very often those relationships merge their heads years later, decades later. Pretty much all of us, myself included, we live in a world of routine. Routines are comfortable, but routines can be a rut. And when you're in a routine, the clock goes fast. It goes fast. I was 35 yesterday. Wow. When you're in a routine, get up, get the kids ready, take them to the carpool, go work, come out, boom, day over, next day. It's like, and then, and then if you don't get out of the routine and take advantage of those five weekends a year, creating whatever, you wake up and you're 60 and 70 or 50 or 40 or whatever, and you're like, man, my knee's messed up. I can't, I always wanted to do that, but now I can't do that. Mm. Man, I'm, you know, like you just don't know. I just said to my wife as I turned 50, like, let's have a big, I want to have a big celebration. This is a monumental birthday and it's really affecting me how I think, you know, it's like, I didn't think it would, but turning 50 is having a big impact on me. And I said, when I was 25, I had a big party in New York City where I was living and I want to kind of replicate that. And she said, wow, honey, you know, think about all the things that you've accomplished in the last 25 years. And I'm like, I appreciate it, but compared to, I haven't done anything. 
compared to what I, the potential and what I want to do, you know? And she said, well, then think about the things that you love to do over those, over the last 25 years. What are the things that you love to do? And who have you loved to do them with? And for me, it's been the races, the travel, the this and the that. She said, well, look, put as much of that on your plate as you can with the people that you love to do it with in the next 25 years of your life. And that's sort of my mission statement. We invest so much time in our work resume, which is important, but I think it's equally, if not more important, to build your life resume because that's really an indication of who you are and what you're becoming. And that's really a true uh, look into your true body of work.